Hey, Super Hero Geek Toolkit. Today we're gonna to build a geeky rug. We're gonna use a laser that is a diode laser from the company Longer. They make a 30 watt diode laser. They sent it out to me. I said, look, I'm, I'm kind of burned down our reviews. Let's do a project and show why this laser is cool. It has, you know, air assist. It has the emergency stop. It has a very easy focus system where a little thing flips down. A lot of the things, now the biggest thing about this, besides that it's a 30 to 36 watt laser module, like true power, is under $1,000 if you catch it on a good sale. And I'll put the, you know, in the description and all. Uh, that's still expensive, but if you're looking to get into high power diode lasers, and you compare it to CO2s, that is a pretty reasonable price for the, for the power. The other cool thing about that power is it allows us to do doormats. I wanted to make a geeky doormat, and a lot of the videos talk about doing it in CO2 lasers, or uh, you see like a kind of a brownish look when it gets done. We're gonna talk about how to get a nice, good, crisp look on it, a nice black on a tan look, good contrast, great image quality, and we'll talk about how to test it. We'll talk about where to get the rugs and then we'll go on to like learnings and other stuff. Let's just start out, where do you get the rugs? I got mine at Walmart. Uh, it was six US dollars. If you get them on Amazon, they're 15 US dollars and then it goes up from there. But the key word that you wanna know is coir, C-O-I-R. It's basically a coconut fiber. That's what you want because that's what you're gonna singe with the laser. It's also why we have to go fast, by the way, and I'll talk about that when we do talk about testing. But that will be the thing that you can search for to get a good deal on these rugs. I wanna talk about this machine. This is the Longer B1 30 watt laser. Uh, this is what was sent out to me. This is the air assist for it. Then you've got the flame alarm. Uh, on off switch is here. This key will actually deactivate it. It gives you a lock, so you've got a safety piece here. There is also on this side an e-stop. It's got tilt detection. Uh, and then it's got end stops here. You can see here and here that allow it to know where it's at for zeroing. Very, very simple focus mechanism. It's a manual focus. You rotate this to loosen it. And then this little thing here, let's see, flips down. And when that's down and touching your workpiece, then you pull this here, you tighten this up, and then you just flip this back up and you're ready to go. Nice, easy way to focus it. Uh, it is a 17.3 inch by 17, uh, just over 17 inch on the other side. I think it's 450 millimeter by 440 millimeters. So quite a large working area. It's bigger than most of the lasers that have been out there. So if you have an enclosure already, you're gonna want something bigger. It's got the ability to add a touch screen here, SD card, and then you've got uh, your USB to go to your computer. And then this is the power cable. It's got one power cable that powers both the laser and the air assist. I want to think longer for sending this out. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, once you have your doormat material ready, buy two, by the way, because you're going to want to test on one of them, right? And then you'll have your, your final one. When you're testing, please do not use the standard grid method. Uh, the reason being is the grid method is like power across one axis, time, speed across the other, and you automate it and just let the laser run. With coconut fibers, if it goes too slow, it's going to catch on fire. If it goes too high a power, it's going to catch on fire. Um, that's bad, you, obviously, right? So you don't want that. So you can't test with a grid typically. You're going to need something a little bit smarter that you want to do. It's a very simple approach. It's kind of brute force. But what I did is I started out with like 12,000 millimeters per minute in light burn. I gave it about 40% power. So low power, high speed, let it run. Turns out I immediately got a good marking with those speeds on this laser. Then I went 24,000 millimeters per minute, 80% power, double the speed, double the power. I got about the same thing, which is what I would expect, but now I had two points of reference that I could tweak. I could slow it down to get a little bit darker, or I could increase power to get a little bit darker from the 12,000. That's really what you want to do. You want to get it as dark as possible, as fast as possible. Once you have that, then you know what, what I call your contrast numbers to get the really good blacks. Once you have that dialed in, that's not the that's just the beginning of testing. There's two other things you really need to know. One is what is your design going to be? If your design is going to have graphics, you're going to want to test graphics on there. For me, I was going to have little round logos from different geek genres. And so I tested like the Mortal Kombat symbol 
and stuff like that to basically have a symbol. If you have a sports team that you want to do, if you have a band name that you want to do, stuff like that, do the logo and test the graphics. Keep in mind, you're going to want to make it a bit bigger than you would expect because you're going to be, pretend you're working on a very low resolution screen. Now, I said there were two things. The other thing is your font size, your lettering. You're going to want to have lettering that is very large and bold so that you have something that you can actually catch on to. Thin lines do not work well here. They don't show up well on the rug and they don't show up well for somebody standing above the rug looking down trying to read it. So you want things that are bold, thick lines. Okay, once you have that, you've tested your material, you know your speed, you know your font size, you know what fonts you can use, and you know your logos. Now you need a design. You can think outside the box here. You don't have to go look up a design on Etsy or whatever, or Timu or whatever. You can actually make whatever you want, right? So think about like your, maybe your high school sports teams or uh, things that you normally would not be able to combine to put onto a single product that you can do because you're making it for yourself. For me, I was making a geek one, so I did a bunch of geek logos across uh, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Star Trek, um, Tolkien, all sorts of stuff on there. That was what I, you know, what I wanted. I, I came up with a saying. I used uh, ChatGPT, honestly, to come up with a bit of a saying. And then I put those logos top and bottom, and I had a good design, and that, that's what I went with. But I saw a ton of other ideas. Now... If you're thinking about reselling the rugs, especially knowing that you can get them for $6 and you might already have a diode laser, Etsy sells packs of sayings and designs and all of that that you can get for about three US dollars, very inexpensive for like 24 and then you can run with it. So lots of ideas out there. But at the end of the day, I would say it's your rug, make it cool. Make it something that you're proud of, put your name on there, put, you know, I see a lot with last names and so on. I'm gonna cut in here. I was trying to explain this on camera and I realized it's just better to, to show it. So this is me and Lightburn. And what I've done here is if you go over here to start from and go to user origin and then say job origin center, you'll get this green dot that's the center of this square or yeah, this square, which is my cutting area of my longer uh, B1. Now this rectangle here I created and what I did is if you click on it and you say don't output it, and then if you go to shape properties and make it the size of your rug, it gives you a visual representation of the thing you're gonna cut onto. Now there's, of course, a million different ways to do this, especially with the camera and so on, but this is the way I've found to do it, and I like it, it's very visual for me to see. Okay, I've got the rug here, and then I've got my where my laser is gonna go uh, in here, so then I can take my, my whatever I'm gonna put on the rug and just kind of line it up with that center point there. Now once I have that, oop, then I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to get that green dot, which I know is the center of everything. I'm going to get as close as I can here. So, okay, so now I know where that green dot is, is this intersection. I'm going to show you another trick that you should know if, but if you haven't used light burn, it's kind of hidden. So if you go to device settings, there's a thing here that says enable light laser fire button. That's off by default. You want to turn that on. And if you turn on enable uh, laser when framing, what that does is that gives you a new button over here on the move where you can hit fire. So you can give it a little bit of, like just a little bit of power and hit fire and the laser will fire and you can see where the laser beam is. And if you use this tool here, you can actually move the laser beam to this green dot. Now your laser point is at the center of where your laser cutting area is. If you go ahead and measure your rug and take the halves of your width and height and find the center of your rug and place that under this point, your rug is now centered on this point. If you centered your design on that point as well, you've now got your design centered inside the rug. Anything else you want to do onto your design by having this mock rug here, you can kind of see where it'll end up. Now for the corner, like if you want to do corner, you know, decorations or whatever, you'll have to move things around. But as far as just centering, this is a really easy technique and I use this for a number of things, including tiles and so on. Uh, basically find the center point of the tile, turn the laser on and put it right over the tile. It's a great way to center things in Lightburn until you move on to more advanced things like the camera layout and so on. All right, hope that helps. Okay, so in the next part of this is safety. You're gonna wanna monitor this. I used a Wise Cam to monitor it. 
uh, have a fire blanket and then a fire extinguisher next to my lasers. That is very, very important, especially for this project. One thing I learned, do not put a fan on this to try to blow the fumes away. Uh, I was trying to blow them out of my garage. That's bad because you're basically creating wind across uh, heat that's going on to coconut fibers. That's going to that's gonna help it catch on fire. The other thing is you don't want your air assist on this. This is an engrave and the air assist is just going to help it also catch on fire. So I kept my air assist off. I kept my fan off and I just let it go and it did fine for the full hour. At the end of this, you should have a fairly nice doormat. You're gonna to wanna to probably cover it with some kind of protector ink coating. I'll, I'll show you a picture of what I ended up using. And once you have that done, you're in good shape. You can put, I've had mine outside for a week. It's been pretty much through all the weather patterns out here where I live. And I've walked all over it. It's been fine. Nothing's uh, smearing or anything like that. I'm very, very happy and I'm probably going to put them all over my house now, uh, going into into my garage and so on. I'm Joe Farrow, Geek Toolkit. I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. I also want to thank Longer for sending this laser out to me. I appreciate them uh, letting me do a project with the laser instead of a review. And I do have some other projects I'm going to do with this laser. It's, it's great at cutting wood. I was cutting at 500 millimeters per minute last night. And so I've got some projects there I can show. I've been doing a lot of work, uh, basically picking up things from Etsy and testing them to see how these projects work together. And what I'd like to do is bring that to my channel because it's, I think it's interesting to see, again, what can you do with these lasers? How are, hard are these projects to put together? How do they come out? Like they show you a, a picture of what it looks like that they say it's gonna come out. How does it actually come out? So I'll get into all of that in the, the next videos. Also, I am going to a craft fair on the second and I'm very excited about that because this will be my first craft fair and we'll see how things sell. Probably do a couple of videos on uh, how we price stuff, inventory management, uh, how we're building like little stands for displaying stuff. 3D prints, all of that. There's gonna be a lot of learning and I love sharing all that stuff. So a lot of good stuff coming on the channel soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Until next time.